Hi everybody, this is Neil Allen, the creator of the comic series Zatswan Multiversal Guardian, which you can read for free at zatswan.com, link in the description. And today we're going to be coloring in this top panel here on this page from my comic. And we're going to be using colored pencils to do it. As you can see, I have finished this page, but while I was working on it, I got a lot of footage of my process that I would like to show you and talk to talk with you about. The pencils that we will be using are Caran Dash Luminance colored pencils, which are one of the top brands of colored pencil in the market today. So let's get into the video and see what I have going on. And if you enjoy this content, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. So let's get to it. I'm starting out going along the outer edges of this figure with a light blue color. I don't know the exact name of the color. I'll get better at that as I continue to do these videos and I can tell you exactly what the colors names are. But the reason I'm doing that is because this character here is jumping out a window and he's jumping into like a bluish night sky. So the color of that is reflecting on him and so I'm putting it along his edges here. Uh, so when I paint the background in, you know, you'll you'll see what that looks like. And that helps, you know, kind of harmonize the subject of the of the piece here, which is this character with the uh, back, the backdrop of it ca helps bring them together. And it just makes sense for the picture. Like when you have light, light around, it, it's good to reflect, reflect that uh, on your subject. So you're going to see a lot of repetitive motions here, you know, me going over the same areas over and over again. And that's just how colored pencils work. Some people like that and some people don't. Um, I'm a, like the people who don't like it, find it slow and repetitive. And they may even say that their their hand starts to bother them. The people who do like it um, find it a meditative and relaxing process. And for the people who uh, have hand problems I find that interesting like I don't discount their experiences of course but I would wonder like how much pressure are you applying um, to the paper you know with the pencil now in many cases during this video you might see my hand you will see that my hand will be pretty like right now my hands pretty far back um, along the barrel of the pencil and that helps you know get light layers in when if you want to get he like heavier application then you move your hand closer to the edge where the exposed core is you know it, it helps when you want to apply pressure um, the way that I use pencils is that I apply very very light layers um, I don't go in very very heavy-handed so you don't have to go in um, pressing down as hard as you can with the pencil or close to as hard as you can you're actually there you're not typically supposed to apply like a lot of pressure with colored pencils there is a time when you do want to have a heavier application and that is when you've built up a lot of light layers and you want to blend them all together with a technique called burnishing that's when you um, press down pretty hard with your pencil to blend all the light layers that you've built up and flatten the tooth of the paper to get rid of that sort of speckled look, that kind of grainy look that colored pencils can have. That's another aspect that um, of colored pencils that some people might not like. It's that kind of speckled look where you can see the white of the paper still. So the interesting thing about colored pencils is that you don't have to have that look. Um, the idea much of the time is to not have that look actually it's to build up a lot of layers like what you're seeing me do here and then blend those layers out so that the tooth of the paper isn't showing through anymore and there are different ways in which you can blend out what you're going to see me um, employing later on in the video is the use of odorless mineral spirits that is a substance that um, breaks down the binding agents within the um, lay down that you're seeing me put down on the paper and it allows the pigment to flow to flow better 
So what happens is, um, in putting it in simple terms, what happens is the tooth of the paper um, starts to get filled in by the um, pigment. See, what the pencil is made up of, what, what the core is made up is of is binder and pigment and the odor that the binder is what keeps the pigment together um what binds it together literally and the odorless spirit mineral spirits will break down those binding agents um once your pencils applied to the paper the you 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 use odorless mineral spirits to break down the binding agents and the pigment flows better but colored pencils yes there are pros and cons like i consider myself a mixed media artist and you know all the different art mediums have their upsides and their downsides and there are times when one one art medium will work better than another art medium for whatever you're um, planning on doing like there are moments that suit one one medium more than another what colored pencils really bring to the table i find is um ease of use for one thing they're easy to understand um easy to use they're low maintenance they're not low maintenance in that you can take them just about anywhere um you can um they're, you're not likely to make a big mess with them like you may with soft pastels or even oil pastels or any um, type of paint. And they're easy to get into. They're pretty cheap to get into. Like, um, yes, like the colored pencils that I'm using here are very expensive as colored pencils go. But you have to factor in like paper and things like that and other tools you may need like with paint watercolors for example you need brushes you need a certain type of expensive paper and so on colored pencils work good with many different types of paper um so they're very versatile in that respect like you can get cheap watercolor supplies but what i would say is that you would get you'll get penalized to a greater degree for cheaping out on watercolor supplies than you typically will for colored pencils i'm not like advocating getting like low quality pencils i'm not but what i'm saying is that say um when you're using watercolor for example um the paper that you use is going to be very very crucial and it does matter with colored pencils too but watercolor paper tends to be very expensive um because it has to withstand that water application right so um, you don't want to cheap out on the paper with watercolor paper um, and you don't want to cheap out with the brushes either At watercolor I have found to be like generally speaking more expensive to get into than colored pencils and many of the other art mediums are too so colored pencils you know easy to get into low maintenance and it one of the other key factors is it offers unparalleled precision um, like you can be, for example, you can be very precise with watercolor. I'm not saying you can't, but it's much easier to be very, very precise with colored pencils than it is with watercolor or soft pastel or um, other other mediums as well. So colored pencils offer like a high, high degree of precision as well, which is neat. And these particular pencils, um, Karen Dash Luminance, uh, they are like a more expensive pencil. One of the most expensive uh, brands of colored pencil, actually. They're very, very nice. Uh, their big claim to fame is uh, their light fastness. And what light fastness is, is um, it is a rating that tells you how well a pencil can withstand um, withstand the the pressure of sunlight. See what happens is like if um, pigment is under like sun, like very powerful sunlight over a period of time, it will start to like fade and lighten. And that's n not ideal because you, you lay down the colors that you want. You don't want them shifting. These pencils here can withstand like, um, you know, very high degrees of sunlight 
very well and maintain um, their color. Uh, I like light fastness a lot, but what really brings me to Caran Dash pencils is their performance, high pigment, a payoff. Um, like no other pencil quite lays down quite like a Caran Dash luminance pencil. It's very unique. There are other brands that I like that are also unique in their own right, but the uh, Caran Dash is um, high pigment payout, good at blending. And I do like the light fastness aspect of them too. So typically with colored pencils, you do want to go light to dark, meaning that you want to lay down your lightest shades first. Um, and then you can go over those with your darkest shades. And you'll see like in spots, I'm also protecting the white of the paper because those are my lightest highlights. So there are times when you do want to go over darker shades with lighter ones, like when you're blending all the colors together. But the way I tend to use them is to start with my lightest colors and then go into my uh, darker colors. So now you're seeing it all build up here. And I'm not going to finish up this whole picture just in this one video. This will be somewhat of a series and I'll create a playlist for it. Um, so you can see like how I build all this up in the picture but yeah i'm bringing in my darker colors now to get those shadowy areas and you're seeing those go on top of like the lighter layers that i established but as you can see i'm just building up layers and layers and layers and pretty soon i'm going to bring in odorless mineral spirits to uh, blend those layers together and break down that binder and that those little white speckles that you're seeing in the paper are going to disappear more but um I tend that tends to be it's not just you do that one time it's a process you repeat until you get your picture to look the way you want it to so even after these are the odorless mineral spirits here even after I use some of the odorless mineral spirits I'm going to apply even more um, light layers on top of that and eventually you won't see those like little white spots in the paper so I'm pouring it into this jar because I'm going to use a brush and I don't want to contaminate the original bottle of odorless mineral spirits so I will use the brush and um, put the brush in the jar and then apply the odorless mineral spirits to the picture that way and we should zoom in a little closer to the picture so you can kind of see the binder breaking up and just what this substance does to the uh, pigment that I laid down here and I am going to like I said um, apply the apply the odorless mineral spirits let them dry they're not going to take forever to dry you don't have to like let it sit overnight it doesn't take near that long let them dry and then go over um, the layers again with even more layers and just build up then apply more odorless mineral spirits over that and eventually that's you know how I build up my finished piece but as I said, you're not going to see all of that in this particular video, but stay tuned for more. I will be back very soon with other videos that continue this, but I, I don't want this video to go on forever, so I am going to close it out pretty soon. Be sure to check out Zatswan.com to read my uh, webcomic for free, and I hope to see you there. And subscribe to this channel and like, hit the like button and share it with others if this is a type of content that you enjoy. I'll see you all soon, okay? Take care.